when I first started drinking, I found that it gave me confidence. But it was like a false confidence, you know what I mean? So, obviously, if I needed to go anywhere, do anything, you know, I'd have a drink first, and then it kind of spiralled out of control. I, 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 as looking back, I'd always had issues with alcohol. Um, I just never realised uh, the getting up, having to drink in the morning to feel normal. Um, obviously, as I'd not been brought up in an environment around that, I didn't realise that that was wrong. It, it was a problem. Because then it became a necessity, a habit, and then an addiction, you know what I mean, which I couldn't kick off. I've always, like, turned to the drink, you know what I mean? So, sometimes I can stay off the drink for a period of time and then things happen, things flare up, and I deal with it incorrectly, do you know what I mean? So, but I've been in and out of jail a few times. The, the problem grew um, throughout my marriage, and then um, my husband was quite well up in the RAF, and um, I became an embarrassment, basically, to the point where um, he couldn't be deployed in the end because I was in such a mess, basically. Um, the marriage ended and I had to leave marriage quarters and, and I knew that I had, I, when I came back to Lincoln I had nowhere to live so I came straight from marriage quarters and went straight out on the streets, basically. Uh, when I came back to Lincoln I thought the council would help me with, with me having local connections here. That isn't the case and seven years on I was still on the streets. Well, I ended up in the corner house, um, I got released from jail on the... Um 16th of uh, December and I was back on the streets again. What were you in prison for? A frame weapon. And uh, so um, I ended up back on the streets again, nowhere to live, this, this and this. So um, I accessed Nomads, which is just down the road. And then um, we, we sorted out me trying to get in here, which was, was great really because they accepted me and um, I've been in here for about five weeks now. So... It, how long had you been in prison for? Nine months. I got an 18-month sentence and I was in prison for nine months. But it gave me the opportunity to sort myself out. But I am an alcoholic. Yeah. And unfortunately, with um, the culture with alcoholism and homelessness, is they go hand in hand, um, along with other issues like drugs. And um, fortunately, drugs has never been a problem for me, thankfully. Um, as I do class, I've got a, a bit of an, an addictive personality. I never went down that road, but it would have been very, very easy to. It's very accessible on the streets. Well, it's helped me because, firstly, okay, it, it's given me a stable environment, okay, where I can recover, all right? Secondly, you know, I'm not on the streets anymore, and I have a healthy routine to my day. Do you know what I mean? Would it be in a dry house as well? Um, you're not allowed to drink, so you don't drink. You get breath tested three to four times a day, maybe more if they feel you need it. Um, there's support network with um, Dart, Ad Action. They do group work here. They do a map session, which tries to help you with different tools to be able to cope with stuff. Yeah, they do. They've got relaxation. Yeah, um, they do reflexology. Uh, they do acupuncture, you know, quiz nights, bingo, this kind of thing. So th there's a lot they offer. Uh, I knew the corner house was obviously being built for a year before it opened. We could see it, like, uh, the builders building it. And obviously we found out, uh, I found out what it was about. And never in a million years did I ever think that I would be able to access a service like this. I've tried places before. I've been to my doctor to go to rehab. Rehab's very expensive go to rehab, they only get to send them there for two or three weeks, thousand pound a week that is. Um, they go there, miles away, and then they're straight back into Lincoln again. It's so like street. a vicious circle, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. There's no, and it's just, it costs the public purse something like 46 million quid out of, um, to, for these, this, this group of people, blue light clients that we call them, um, cost the local economy 46 million in just like emergency services and those type of things. And long-term care as well, because a lot of them, if, you, if we don't catch them now, are going to have real long-term chronic illness and they're going to have to be cared for. We show them around when they come for their assessment and uh, they're actually in tears. Some people are like, you know, I'm not worth this. 
because they've been labelled. They've been labelled for so long as being you know, hopeless, homeless drunks. Um, and they've been round and round services and everybody knows them in the town and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And they just think they're not worth it.